G'day viewers, my name's Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world. And lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. G'day viewers and welcome to Colour in Your Life in New Zealand. Now the team and I have come over to New Zealand, we're going to be spending a couple of weeks here and we're circumnavigating the South Island of New Zealand to get some of the great artists of New Zealand onto the show. We're going to have a fantastic time and as you can see, look at this country. It's just amazing. So we're going to wake our way all the way around the bottom of the South Island and see some of these incredible people. So come along for the ride, it's going to be fantastic. Well hi folks and welcome back to Colour in Your Life. Well we're up at a little town called Reefton up in the northwest area of the South Island of New Zealand and we are with an amazing lady who lives in this fantastic little town, Alison Hale. Welcome to the show. Thanks Good, Graham. good to see you. So well, we're in Alison's um, studio which is actually uh, the old courthouse in the middle of town and you've been in this courthouse for 15 years is that right? Yeah it's been a long time now yep. And uh, Alison's got a really interesting history you've, you've been in this area for quite some time and I think when I look at your work and hopefully you'll agree is that a lot of the things that you do are really about past memories for you. There's mm. a lot of soul I mean you really create from your soul. Uh, tell me a little bit about you as a, as a kid and how you came about to, to do the horses and the way that you paint. It's, it's got a lot to do with your past, hasn't it? I remember as a little girl, whenever I saw a horse tracking or anyone going past the gateway with horses, I was out there like a shot. It was just the smell. I envied them so much. I'd follow horses anywhere. My sister and myself we got into an awful lot of bother with horses, but it was just the sound, the feel, the smell of horses was just really full on. I'd... And you've really kept that going into your whole career. Which, I mean, you went through this sort of situation where you you were actually milking at one stage and saving the money from your milking to buy a saddle because of your fascination with the horses. But and as I said, I mean, obviously, as we go through and the viewers get to see what you're doing, there is this real inherent, uh, I think, emotional position for you as a creator and as a woman that really goes a long way back to when you were a young girl. And, and it's the, all of these memories. You, you paint a lot of your memories. And even before you were saying that you really put yourself into these pictures as well in occasions to sort of say, I'm isolated or you know, there's something going on in your life. So it, it really is work that completely comes from the heart as far as I'm concerned anyway. So, But today, you've already made a start on this particular piece yep. here. And obviously with Alison's fascination towards the horse, I'd say you'd have a pretty good understanding of what a horse was like as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit like, um, when, I, when I'm painting, it's like brushing a horse, Yeah. you know, in a way. Okay. Yeah. And the, do you think that the horses are, Obviously, as an artist, I mean, there's a, is there an extension of you somewhere in the animal? <laughs> uh, it's the feel of actually just feeling the, yeah, I don't know, running your hands down over a horse. It's uh -huh. just like when you're painting, it's just feeling like that. It's, yeah. it's that extension of me when I'm doing the, the long legs and they're walking out. Yeah. It's, that's the extension, I feel. Yeah. But I mean, just, just the way that you're doing it right there, I mean, I can see that you've got a fantastic understanding of the animal. That's pretty obvious. And then the, the action, the free flow, is just really, really fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's only recently that I've decided to actually just draw on the canvas with an oil stick, basically. It's, yeah, and then just do a wash and wash some of the lines out because I got tired of actually having, um, going too far with some of my works. I, I prefer to back off and let's try and, what I'm trying to do now is to actually stop when I'm still feeling excited with it. Sure, sure. When I've still, still got that buzz, you know, when cool. you're still, rather than killing it later on. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> just going to work that horse into the ground. Yeah, so that, this, just, this just gives me the moving lines that mm. I enjoy. And, uh, 
I'm just looking at, I might just, um, I'd like to bring that back in there. Get okay. a bit more overlap, but um, this is. Just love the, fr the free flow of the way that you work. There's no tightness to it at all. No. You really just sort of understand the animal as best you can by throwing your arm out to it. Now what I'll do is I'll just throw it. I'm going to get a bit of wash. Yeah. Stand. Don't ask me the parts because I can't remember. I just go to a certain texture that I sort of like. Well, something that, uh, that you understand, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. So do you think that a lot of what you do is it's obviously pretty instinctual for you? Yeah, I sort of sat out in the paddocks for years drawing horses and yards and just doing parts of animals. Yeah. You know, um, as they're moving around, so you have to be quite quick. But yeah, yeah just parts of. And yeah, when I try and get all the information in here, yeah. and then so then it allows me just the freedom to, to paint as I want to. So, and yeah. It, it, come, it comes out beautifully, absolutely it does. Your passion for art, mm -hmm. when, did you, when did you really find that? I mean, obviously you were young, but it was, uh, it's something that you'd always wanted to do as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I always yeah. loved drawing. Absolutely loved drawing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, it made me feel good. Um, yeah. But everybody, there's a lot of kids better than me at school, so. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, you, you, you sort of went through that phase where obviously you became a mum at a young age, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it was sort of like you obviously had to, to bring up your family and do what you needed to do, but it was a stage where your art simply took over who you were and you've obviously discussed it with the kids and said, listen, kids, I've got to go and do this. Well, I had no yeah. idea what was out there. I'd never been to an art school. I'd never been to a gallery at that point. Uh -huh. I really wanted to study. There was an opportunity turned up to study, do a foundation course. Yeah. And once you started, you couldn't really stop. It was... It went from there. Yeah, yeah. And you've been, so how long have you been a full-time artist now? Uh, 96 I graduated, yeah. Okay. I went and did four years in Dunedin and um, yeah, and it was wonderful, yeah. Missed the kids, but it was wonderful. Well, in any sense, and, and, and knowing of what you said about your children, they've really turned out to be very successful people themselves. Yeah, so, they have. You know, I think, yeah. it's, I think it's following that passion. I think that's just so important as a human being is that if you deny that to yourself, you know, and you could get to the age of 50, 60 or 70, knowing that you didn't do it. I mean, I think the people around you respect you far more because of the fact that you made the decision to take control of your life. I mean, maybe when you were young, you didn't have that control. No. You see what no, I mean? So no. it's sort of like, I can do this now. I, want, I wanted my children to follow their dream. I wanted them to hang on to what they had right from yeah. when they were little, you know. And it didn't matter if it changed, if, as long as they had uh, something in front that they really wanted. Really. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got these magnificent professional children that have done amazing <laughs> things in their lives. No, they're great. Yeah. I think it's, I yeah. think it's a great no, reflection on you as a person as well. Oh, I think their dad had a bit to do with that as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where are we up to there? Uh, yeah, right. It's looking good. Looking so good. really, it's, 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 it's not going to be hugely different than this just for now. Yeah. Um, I'll put it aside. But I just think that the, the movement that you can capture in your work, particularly with the freedom that you have in the way that you, uh, you move the oil pastel around, I think is just great. Even sort of where you sort of you'll, you'll do something and you go, well, that's not working for me. You just come in and rub it out. Yeah. I think that's great. It's nice. I just love the soft watches, you yeah. know, that you get. Yeah. Um, with this, it's, it's kind of cool. It's just a nice play time, really. There's a, just a really good sense of freedom. Mm. I mean, there's no, there's no tightness at all. No. There's just, there's just no. a response to the canvas. Yeah. And I love painting loosely. And yeah, and then it sends me forward into something else, which is really cool. Onwards yeah. and upwards, as I uh, say. Yeah, onwards and upwards. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, what we'll do is we'll take this one. You've already, um, Alice has already started on the other one um, because of the fact that the mm. looseness, I just love these. But uh, we'll take this one off and then we'll put the painting up and we'll continue with that. Yep. Fantastic. Okay, well, as you can see that Alison's really made a, a great start on this, Not using using a paintbrush to obviously outline yeah, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And then you've you've really got a lot of, uh, obviously, washes coming into your work again. But what I, what I think is really poignant about this piece is that you're really trying to create some, some tension and some atmosphere in the painting. And that's either you or your daughter. <laughs> which, which, one, which one is it? <laughs> well, it's um, a bit of a mix, really. Um, it's, um, I often find I paint myself in my hair when I was a little girl, but 
but really it's what I've seen my daughter do when she's been out catching the horses for us because we had a lot of horses mm -hmm. um, gone through our hands over the years. Yeah. Let's uh, let's make a start. I mean, you've obviously you've obviously gotten into it anyway, and I just like I said, I just love these effects. <laughs> I mean, the, the, what comes up in your work, I think, is fantastic. So I'm going to start putting some more darks in around here. Yep. Uh, then I'm going to lift that back out here with the light. I'll keep some move, more movement and wash into the legs and add a bit more dark to give a bit more form. Mm -hmm. Then I've still got to try and create, keep that tension going to the little girl. Um, yeah, that's just about where I work at the moment. Okay, mm. let's, let's make a move on it then. So do you ever prepare your canvases at all or you paint straight on them? I do and I don't. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I often put a gesso on them. Yeah. This particular one hasn't got gesso on yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't think it had, but it's actually yeah. a good quality canvas too. Yeah, 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 it's been primed well enough, so. Yeah. Um, they say the acid of your hands, when they're hand stretching them isn't, you know, it's a good idea to wipe them down, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, first. Um, I've just got one through there that I, I just sewed up the other day. Okay. I also paint on hardboard too, which is about four or five coats of gesso. But and glass, which, and we'll, glass, which, yeah. we'll, which we'll show <laughs> later on, so yeah. your audience will be fascinated by that. So I'm sort of thinking about just the structure of the horse. But you know, it's pretty obvious you've got a, you've got a real good understanding of the way they walk and the way their heads sort of drop down and pull up and you can <laughs> see it a mile away. Kind of. I do get a bit confused sometimes with some of the legs, yeah. Especially when you miss one out and yeah. you've got a group of them or several out and you sort of think, will I get away with that? <laughs> it's, a, it's a stampede and we're one leg short. <laughs> yeah, and yet to add that extra one in is just going to confuse the composition. Sure, sure. You know? Yeah, that's understandable. So you can sort of say, well, it's behind something else. And often people don't pick it up. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, and that's fine. Sure. Yeah. If it's saying what I'm trying to make it say is fine. Yeah, and, it's, and, and as you just said, it's, it's, it's the sense of the composition. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like we don't have to be entirely accurate, we need to make the painting work. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah. You know, watching you work, it's it's really instinctual. You know, you're moving back and forth. You, I don't know, you're you're playing with the thoughts in your head, and then using the brush to take it where you need it to go. Obviously, that's what art's about. But <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a bit intuitive, all right. I can get myself into an awful lot of bother at times too. I think, oh, it'll be so cool if I could just paint from photos or something. It would just be so. It would make life easier. <laughs> There's this real dynamic aspect in what you're putting together. I mean, there are no tight lines. It's just there's a, there's a hell of a lot of movement going on. It's that feeling of the body, you know, yeah. like for me. That's what I find sometimes when I'm actually working is, you know, the horse sticking its head out. I find I start sticking my head out as I'm painting sometimes. Mm -hmm. When I used to do a dog hanging off a cattle beast's head, it was, I felt like the dog hanging off the cattle. Yeah, it's... It's just the way I work, I yeah, guess. Yeah, no, that's a great way to look at it. I, I've always felt the same myself. <laughs> I was just thinking of when I, um, I used to get an awful bother with my sister. We used to borrow every horse we could find, and I'm just thinking just now that, you know, I used to drop everything at my backside. <laughs> Brushes in the long grass, I used to frustrate her. She'd Brush. tell me I was never allowed to use them again. <laughs> but I did. I really like the mood that that those washes create in the picture, particularly around that horse's neck. There's just a real, I don't know what it is with the, with the wash there, there just there's something about it. It sort of softens the edges and then it sort of mm -hmm. gives a little bit of detail. So it allows a lot for the imagination, I think, you know, to mm. make up some of those things rather than spelling it all out, I guess. That looks great. Yeah, really good. I like it a lot. The, the figures look, I mean, particularly when you've got that white background, they look really dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> I have to resist sometimes to, because to, I like to keep it at that certain point mm -hmm. rather than 
fill it all in, but I'll mm. I'll take out little areas with a bit of white later mm. on that I don't really want to, but without really interfering too much with some of the lines that I do want in. Sure. But it's a matter of looking at it as a whole in the finish, I guess. Mm. There's certain areas you can actually see the journey of the paint as it sort of wanders around. Sort of tends to That's look a like it's it. the journey of the paint. Yeah, it sort of <laughs> tends to be doing its own thing. Once I start introducing white, as I've started to do now, it's, yeah. it's really easy to start getting muddy, and then I start doing that can start happening very quickly on me. So sometimes I will have to wait. I'm just going to try and wipe it back off if I get really annoyed with it. So you're stepping back, mm -hmm. squinting your eyes, mm -hmm. and you were telling me before you weren't quite sure about that middle horse. And it's really very much about composition and you're sort of trying to really balance all this out in your head, aren't you? Yeah, it um, gives me such a different perspective when I stand back, it really does. I use that and I use the mirror. Uh -huh. um, it's really important um, for me. It tells me when I'm going to leave something when I, when I look back or whether I'll try. But with that horse, it is still, I'm still not 100% happy with the horse's head. Mm -hmm. I'd like to, and the body, I'd like to bring it back, push that back a bit further. I've had a bit more of a play around with it. Mm -hmm. um, but where it goes, I'm, yeah, I want to keep the tension going through. I want to get some more depth. Um, I don't want to lose a lot of the moving lines. And I want to give the little child that feeling, total feeling of really having to pull that horse along. That it's really resisting. The little pony's going to go nicely for it. Um, yeah and the other's just another horse looking on to help with the composition because it creates a sort of a rhythm. Um, we're going down and up and around and I like that in a lot of my works. I like to keep a rhythm going um, rather than having something that's straight along. Um, I try and use a bit more of an interest in this area here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm using the horse there to pull it back against the, the, the um, canvas. Um, I'm hoping that that's what it's doing, it's that it's giving it that tension that she's really having to pull. Um, and if I feel if I had put it there, then it was going to take some of that tension away, I think. Mm -hmm. So what's the, what's the biggest canvas you've ever painted then? No, it's only 1.5 metres is my, and then probably a bit deeper than this. Okay. Yeah. okay. But I did paint my studio wall once, you know, like oh, without school. <laughs> we painted this wall all white. Yeah. And then I just could see this big horse on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, I think you see a horse everywhere. We had to clean it up, you see, at art school. You had to clean it up from the previous tenant. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we, they gave us all a pail of white paint. And I mean, well, you go. Well, I mean, you couldn't leave it white, could you? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> That's one thing with painting, you know, and painting the way I do, I can exaggerate things when I want to, so I don't actually have to um, <laughs> worry too much. About, well, I do a little bit, mm. but. But I love doing the legs longer. It's the feeling of movement that mm -hmm. I feel when sure. I ride. So I extend things out and um, yeah. Yeah, I love it when that, uh, that mixture runs. Yeah, it is. It sort of it takes on a life form of its own. It does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gives it a lot more freedom. So when I'm painting, I'm actually thinking of what's going around on the other side. Yeah, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, so, you know, like in the sense of um, I'm kind of thinking the curves of, and stuff. It's sort of like in your head it's 3D, but you're painting 2D, but you're still seeing it 3D. Yeah, I think, I think that's yeah. what it is. It's yeah. sort of your kind of feel around the way, you know? Yeah. I suppose it's just all part of what you do for drawing, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Sometimes I get really, really stuck, you know, like, oh, I'll try over and over and over in an area. And then that's when I actually, if I haven't got a horse in the paddock, I'll just go and grab a bit of reference material just to clarify my head of how that might go. All right, Alison, uh, sensational stuff. You're going to continue to put this together for us. Um, obviously, we'll screen up the final photo as we, as we go along. But you also do some painting on glass as well. Yeah. Which, it's, is, which is very unusual. Yeah, but reverse glass painting. You've, sort of got the, you've got the reverse glass painting section yeah. out in the middle of the courthouse. We do. So we're going to duck out and have a quick look at that. Yep. Okay. Okay. Okay, so here we are in the middle of the old courthouse, which is just great. And this is reverse glass painting. Yeah, it is. It's on, that's on two mil glass. Sometimes yeah. I paint on two mil to four mil. Mm -hmm. I put the darks on first. I work it like a, uh, a canvas. Yeah. And then 
I start putting the lights on. So while it's facing me, I actually put the darks on. Yeah. And then I turn it around and I start to work underneath from this side to and putting the colour through and the light colours. It's fascinating. Yeah, and you, and you actually ship these all over the world, don't you? I do. Yeah. Yeah, they do. I mean, it's really interesting because the thing that I think that's fascinating about it is that there's always, everything's reversed, but so are the brush strokes. Even the, the texture that you get is a reverse texture, isn't it? It is. It, yeah. it, it is. It's, uh, it's really fun to paint because you don't never quite sure what you're going to end up with, but it suits the Pioneer Woman series that I do really well. Mm -hmm. And you get some gorgeous skies from it as well. And then it's, and I find it really exciting to paint. Yeah, it's yeah. fascinating. And then when you actually put these guys together, yep. I mean, that's actually the, the back of the picture. Yep. You know, it looks sort of, it yep. does look quite odd <laughs> when you look at it that way, doesn't it? But then you come around and there it is like so on the, with the black frame. And that looks, it's just fascinating, it really is. I put two coats on through the thing, through it. I, I, I fill in the gaps with another lighter colour. Yeah. Um, and then it's it, left to dry. And when I frame it, I make sure that there's nothing actually touching the the um, back of the work, yeah. apart from just around the edges where it's clipped in with foam core. Actually, You've got like a, a gun of some sort that yeah, just flicks yeah, that in. Yeah, yeah, I have a, that in. Yeah. And then the board goes on top once it's all done right round. Okay. That goes on and then it's sealed up and then that's your work. And that's fantastic. And, and then the combination of your originals and your glass works, this is all sold in your gallery. It is. In Reefton, isn't it? It is. So. It is. And that's, I mean, the, the, the gallery is beautiful. You've got it set up. The, the journey of the painting. It's as though you've, yeah. you've started. And I think the satisfaction is that you literally can put all of this together and then sell the work in your own gallery. Yeah, there's nothing nicer taking it down to the gallery into a lovely space that you have control of mm -hmm. and hanging it with the spotties on it and just enjoying it for a wee while before it disappears away. Sure. It's just a really good feeling. That's it's kind of like that completion of everything and I'd really miss the gallery uh, yeah. if I didn't have it. Okay, Alison, so your website address is? Alison Hale, artist. .vc.net.nz Fantastic. Okay, well, it's been a fantastic time in your studio and gallery. Thank you so much, Alison, for having Thank us here. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Uh, Reefed in a fantastic place with a very, very talented lady and some amazing work too. It's, it's really incredible what she does. Uh, we hope to get some of your work in our uh, website at some stage as well in the future. And our website address is colourinyourlife.com.au and you can go to Facebook and obviously see us at Colour in Your Life as well. But we're going to head off around New Zealand again and see some of these other amazing people. But remember, until we see you again, make sure you put some colour in your life, guys. See you next time. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>